Another incredible shot on a Sunday night in Beijing. We have quarterfinal action in boxing. The welterweights will step into the ring. And there you have an opportunity to see the brackets we'll be looking at. American Demetrius Andre will fight last in that group in the quarterfinals of the welterweights. Andre struggled in his first round, but put on a clinic in his second. Which Andre will show up tonight? If he wins, he is guaranteed a medal. That's still to come. Now let's get back to Bob and Teddy. Fred, we're looking at the top half of that welterweight quarterfinal bracket. 152 pounds is the weight limit. And it will be Hossam Abdeen against Carlos Banto. Banto, the Cuban, 21 years of age, was cut from the elite team in 2005 when he realized the privileges that he lost in Cuba. He worked hard then when Erzlandi Lara defected, Banto took advantage of the opportunity. Hossam Abdeen of Egypt is 22 years of age. He had a big win in his first bout of the Olympic Games. Did Abdeen as he beat Nan Bum Boon Jung Young, the younger brother of Manus Boon Young Jung, silver medalist at the World Championships, in a thrilling 11 10 win. This is the Cuban's first major international tournament. And you see his stocky body there, Banto. He liked to work his way in a little bit, carefully, smartly, likes to cover up. And every once in a while, he'll stay out and look to counter. He'll do it both ways. Walk you down a little bit in spots and then walk you in as you're trying to do right now with the southpaw in front of him. Enrico Appa of Italy, the referee. I think Abdeen has the kind of style to make the Cuban sweat a little bit. You can see Abdeen does not want to walk into traps. Egypt has won four boxing medals as the Cuban Manto counters and scores. They won Teddy in Athens. So three of the four that they had ever won came in Athens. Cuba, on the other hand. 55 Olympic boxing medals. Make it 56 with Iglesias already winning tonight. Advancing to the semis. You know, the Cuban Banto picks the kind of technical style that fits his physical makeup. He's stocky. You know, he's well defined that way. So he covers up real good. Puts his elbows in, his hands up. And with that kind of body, he doesn't leave a lot of openings. And you can see that. Not a lot of openings for Abdeen. A lot of arms, a lot of gloves when you chuck at Banto. Abdeen shot a right hand to the chest. That's how he got his point. Banto, tight defense, flings a right hand and scores. So Carlos Banto of Cuba. A lot turns 22 until October the 13th. Out with 3 1 lead. Steady action in round number one. And right there, you see a little bit of a looping right hand by the Cuban. Now that punch scored, and it's not supposed to. That punch was behind the ear, and we've seen numerous times boxers throw that punch behind the ear like that there and not is. get credit for it. But Banto did. That's part of the dramatic inconsistency of what is the target area and what is an accepted blow. Sometimes it seems like certain countries just get treated a little bit better by the keypads. Cuba gets treated pretty well. And they take care of their business. I'm not taking anything away from them. They were a terrific team, obviously, as history tells us. Abdeen trying to hook to the body. Again, you see that good peekaboo defense. Those earmuffs up 
a Vanto. Hard to get through those at cover. Unless you can get him to reach a little bit. Like he just did. Nice right hook to the body. Yeah, by that, was, that was a clean punch. No, it wasn't. Hit the score. <laughs> yeah. Banto felt it, though. And that's what the fighters in the Olympics are dependent on when they do go to the body. Even though they don't get the respect from the judges sometimes, they get respect as they land on their opponent. And it affects their opponent and it impacts the fight. Right now, Abdeen trying to figure out a way, a combination to the lock. The lock of that defense of Banto. Trying to box a little bit, Abdeen. Doesn't run, just steps out a little bit, feet set, hoping to lure Banto again out of that tight defense. Out of that comfort zone and right now Banto is enjoying the problem for Abdeen is he's thrown some wonderful hooks to the body and he has no credit for any of them and then Banto throws one shot over the top and he gets a point that was a good clean shot by Banto yeah, it's too bad that Abdeen doesn't get points for body sets because one place that's open that presents itself to you when a fighter like Banto is covering up the way he's putting the gloves up and the elbows in. You can catch him in the body. He gives you the body around those elbows. And as you said, Abdeen's taken that body a couple times, but has not been given credit. 3-1 round in each of the first two for Carlos Banto of Cuba. He's up by four. Osam Abdeen of Egypt on the short end right now of a 6-2 score. And right there, you see little quicker hands, little quicker movement by Banto. And he's looking to score with that right hand over the extended left hand of Abdeen. <laughs> so the Cuban with a comfortable 6-2 lead. As we begin round number three, winner moves to the semifinals in the welterweight division, which means that the worst they can do is earn a bronze. Early on, Abdeen, first round came out for a moment in the southpaw posture, and he's given up on that. He's gone to that orthodox posture and stayed there. And now he's in a posture of having to walk in. He's behind. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. Boy, he really has a tight defense, Teddy. <laughs> he does. Good right hand to the body by Banto. Not a lot of zip in the building right now. The pick up when Salamu Hanati of China fights in the next quarterfinal bout. He had a good lively then. That's exactly what they're saving themselves for. Again, right now, Banto has taken the attitude, I don't have to take chances, I'll cover up, look for my spots. Use my jab, stay with fundamentals. That's one thing the Cubans do. They have talent. But they attach their talent to good, solid fundamentals. Saw the slow punches of Abdeen. Nice combination by Abdeen. Then Banto responded and got the point. But once in a while, Banto leaves that left hand out there when he jabs. Look for Abdeen to try to fire right hand and time it over that jab. He tried that time, but he didn't get the jab coming, so no opening. The glove was up by Banto. I think Abdeen is going to be shocked when he goes back to his corner and finds out that he got no points in this round. And how about that one two he just threw? Again, Banto goes back into that fortress. So Carlos Banto of Cuba with a very easy round. 2 nothing lead, 8-2 overall. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey,
siéntate, pelea arriba, arriba. Pedro Roque, el head coach, saying, si la mejor mano tuya es un serio que prefiere la pelea en vez de la box. Bueno, esta noche está boxeando muy bien. Te sorprende, aquí no hay sorpresa, mi hermano. Aquí nosotros venimos a pelear para medalla. Aquí no hay sorpresa y usted está bien preparado. Usted nunca ha hecho ese disparate de tirarte para adelante con la derecha. Prepare bien el camino. Usted puede trabajar la derecha. Pero tiene que trabajar el camino y la distancia con esa mano. If you're not on the elite team, you're nowhere in Cuba. And he worked his tail off to get back on that team. And then the world champion, Erzlandi Lara, defected. And that opened the door for Banto to get on the Olympic team. A producer doing double duty in my headset, being an interpreter for the Cuban corner, speaking in Spanish, and just told me that he got reprimanded a little bit for diving in. See, that speaks really clearly to what I was talking about before. They have talent, but they want fundamentals. They want good, strong basics. And that is one of the strengths of the Cuban teams. Carlos de Molina doing double duty. Banto's only 21 years of age. First big international test. And he's a minute 35 away from that, earning at least a bronze. Takes a good jab and gets a point. Dips away from the punches of Abdi. So the way the Cubans look at it, the talent is the car. You know, you have a nice car, you have a, you know, a sports car, it's a revved up car, it's got a good engine in it. But what does that car mean if it doesn't have a good driver? And the driver to the Cubans is good, solid fundamentals good solid technique well, mentally and physically cut under the left eye of Abdeen Dr. Charles Butler of Kalamazoo Michigan is the International Boxing Association president of ringside medicine and the chairman of the Aiba Medical Commission and again, we said it, we've seen him throughout the tournament. There was a fighter very early in the tournament. I believe it was from Morocco. No, uh, Samoa, Samoa. Samoa. And that's exactly right. And he was knocked out of delayed reaction. He was knocked out. He was taken out on the stretch. And we witnessed Dr. Butler and his staff just doing a exemplary job of taking care of the fighter, making sure he was okay. And throughout the tournament, doing the same sort of chores whenever they were called upon. Well, Abdeen in the red from Egypt can't buy a point. He got shut out in the third. Okay, he landed a good left about 20 seconds ago. Nothing. Gonna, you know, I give credit to Abdeen because, look, he knows that he could just throw caution to the wind and you know, part of him wants to do that, but he's trying to do it within the proper body of work, where he has a better chance to be effective. So he's trying to cut the ring down a little bit and time Banto. Not just rush in, but it's just going to add to the score of Banto. Look, he's trying to force him to stop and then time him, but ran out of exactly that, time. Carlos Banto of Cuba, 21 years of age, in his first major international competition, defeats Hossam Abdin of Egypt here in the quarterfinals. 10 to 2, the final score. And for Banto, he becomes the second Cuban tonight, along with Roniel Iglesias, to earn at least a bronze. He's moved on to the semifinals, and what a road it has been for Banto. Off the team three years ago, back on. And now victorious, knowing that he'll get a chance to compete for silver or gold. And what's happened to this Cuban team that was supposed to be decimated by defections? Looks like the old Cuban team. Not too many guys that are falling out of this Olympic tournament. From the province of Santiago de Cuba, Carlos Banto advances to the semifinals in the welterweight division.